Hello everyone and welcome back to PhD and Productivity. Today we are going to be talking about the different transferable skills that a PhD student has and we have a special guest appearance from Lola here who is feeling a bit clingy today so she will be joining us I guess for at least the beginning of this video. So if you are new here, my name is Kira. I'm doing a PhD in computer science and I'm in my first year and I make videos about that process and just sort of staying productive and different tips for that as well. So if you would like to see more videos like that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed so far. I'm going to be talking about 10 different skills. So eight of these are pretty much relevant to everyone's PhDs and then two are going to be discipline specific but they're going to be stuff that everyone learns. So it's definitely something worth considering if you're thinking about applying for a PhD program, that there are a lot of transferable skills that you will learn, which can be very beneficial when looking for employment in the future. So for my PhD in my university, we have something called a research studies doctoral panel. And they basically decide if you have been doing everything to be advancing in the different transferable skills and stuff like that and we have meetings every six months or so to decide how your progress is going and stuff like that and eight of these transferable skills are related to the specific guidelines that my university has but I think it'll be pretty much the same in anyone's because they're definitely skills that everyone should learn doing a PhD anyways. So whether your university requires you to actually show that you are making a step towards fulfilling these goals or not, I still think it's worth doing because it definitely is good for your CV and just for your personal development as well. So the first and probably the most obvious skill is research skills. So during a PhD you will learn how to formulate a research questions and come up with a method for how to solve that problem or address that problem and be able to critically evaluate your results from whatever you've decided to do about that problem, as well as being able to critically analyze any literature relevant to your topic and be aware of whatever literature, stay on top of the relevant literature and be able to come up with the new solutions, interpret your results. And in this way, you'll learn a lot about critical thinking, which is a very employable skill at the moment, as well as sort of creative thinking because you're coming up with new solutions to problems and addressing different problems. As well, you'll learn all about research integrity and ethics, and that's usually something that your university will require you to learn about, but it's definitely very relevant for anyone doing any form of research to be aware of that, as well as any relevant health and safety. Like for me doing computer science, there's not really any health and safety issues, but if someone who works in a lab, that would be quite different. You'll learn how to become an independent researcher and in that way you'll need to learn how to grant proposals and funding proposals and you'll get better at that process of applying to do your own research as well. So Lola has decided to The second skill is all about personal development and productivity and self-organization. So obviously you have your supervisor but in general you're quite self-sufficient during a PhD and you'll learn how to be self-organizing and to keep on top of things yourself. So in that way you'll learn to be independent with your research and being able to decide what you need to do and set goals for yourself and identify projects to work on and different things that need to be done as well as handling any difficulties that come up. Obviously you can always look for advice from your supervisor, but you do learn over time to be more independent and that's just something you develop throughout the PhD. You also learn how to work effectively in a self-directed manner because at the end of the day you decide your work schedule and the kind of things you need to be doing on a daily basis. Then lastly, you learn about project management from this because your whole thesis is essentially a ginormous project that you are in control of and it's something that you are the person leading the operation for. If you want to hear more about productivity, that's something that I do a lot on this channel. So again, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are out. Also learn a lot about um, organization if you are involved in in organizing your own conference or event so my PhD specifically has us all 
be involved in organizing a machine learning summer school which I think is really great because it does help you a lot with you know things that you will have to potentially do after your PhD if you decide to continue being a researcher or potentially in any job really that you might need that kind of project management um, experience. The next skill is all about sort of teamwork, leadership, cooperation, collaboration and all of the sort of interpersonal skills that you learn during a PhD. So you'll learn to develop working relationships with your colleagues if you are working on papers together that you will be either co-authoring or collaborating on and you'll learn how to work together and what is an appropriate working relationship as well. You'll learn how to deal with other people and to respect each other's views and what your personal style of work is when you're working in the team. Like are you more of a leader or prefer to be led and leadership is definitely something that everyone should practice every once in a while not necessarily for everything but that it is something that everyone should learn especially during this kind of work and additionally you'll learn all about networking and especially going to different conferences and learning how to build these professional relationships especially cross institutional relationships which then can be you know nurtured through papers that are created by people from different institutions. The next two skills sort of go together. So one is career management and one is entrepreneurship and innovation. So for career management, it's, you know, being able to show that the different transferable skills you've learned are applicable to both academic and non-academic work in future. Being able to form a career plan is very important, especially for my program, it's expected that you form your own career plan and actively show that you are you know participating in career events and wanting to develop your career opportunities and being aware of what opportunities there are for you um, again networking is important for this so you want to be building professional relationships such that you know you can be aware of different opportunities that there might be for you and different possible jobs for you in the future and that you are also able to present yourself well through different job applications or and building a CV or interviews and so on. And then for entrepreneurship and innovation, it's important to know that when you're researching, often you are creating new things and understanding the role that cre creativity and innovation can play in research is very important. For me, like career-wise, entrepreneurship is something that I would really like to focus on. Perhaps it's not something that necessarily everyone would be interested in developing, but I do think in terms of research, it's always important to know about especially things like intellectual property and knowledge exchange and how that works and everything. So I do think it's an important skill to develop during a PhD. So the different skills required to develop an entrepreneurial project for both public and private sectors and how much that can contribute to society as well. So again, having outreach to different partners from different universities or different organizations that are outside of your university will also be an important part of this. So again, a lot of these skills come down to personal skills and networking and stuff like that as, alongside different skills that you need to learn. So it's definitely a lot of different things that you can learn or need to learn during a PhD. Then the next three skills are all related to communication. So there are public speaking, so verbal communication, written communication, and then media skills. So for public speaking skills, like during your PhD, you'll be communicating to diverse audiences of both um, discipline specific and non-discipline specific. And it's important to learn how to communicate your research to people who are not necessarily familiar with the topic or even the field in general. So sometimes you'll be like for me, I could be talking about my specific research to somebody else in computer science, but they still don't know what I'm talking about. Or I could be talking to it, somebody who has no experience with computer science and like the different ways they communicate are very different and it's important to learn how to do that. So you'll be talking at conferences or doing poster presentations, um, describing your work in different ways and obviously during the PhD you will have to defend your work as well, especially at the end for the Viva, you will need to be able to get up and defend your work. Um, and as well, you learn through teaching activities how to develop your public speaking skills as well. But it is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. I've heard before, it's like one of people's biggest fears is public speaking. So there are lots of different ways that you can work on that, I guess, through practice. So even like for me, this has been 
a great experience like making these videos has definitely helped my public speaking a lot even though it's not public it still helps a lot so if you want to hear about how i'm currently developing each of these skills let me know in the comments below and i will share that with you guys um because i do think it's important to not only be aware of these skills that you can develop but also be making like an active plan to developing them then for written communication skills obviously you write a ton during your phd whether that's for conferences or journals or your thesis so it's important to pr like improve your writing throughout your PhD, whether that means taking a class or just practicing a lot and getting a ton of feedback, because it's important to improve your grammar as well as being able to make clear, concise, logical arguments and, you know, being able to back up what you're saying with a proper argument. Um, and you'll also get some experience doing proposal and grant writing as well. And a lot of people say that one of the best ways to learn about academic writing is from submitting your work and having peer reviewers comment because it tells you a lot about what you need to improve. And the same way that when you're peer reviewing, you will also learn a lot about um, written communication because you'll be getting better the more you read as well. So reading and writing go really well together and it's important to be doing a lot of both of them so that you can improve your writing skills and your critical reading skills as well. Then for media skills this is slightly more debatable I guess because not everybody feels that having media presence is an important part of doing a PhD. I personally think that it is only because I think scientific communication is very important and being able to communicate your research with the public is a very important thing in my view because it often has benefits for the public as well as depending on your background and what program you're in, it can be very important for you to be a public figure for your specific discipline. So obviously for me being a woman in a STEM PhD program, I think it's very important to be talking about this online because of the whole, you can't see what you can't be. And it can be very inspirational for young people who see people who are like them doing something that they didn't think that they could do. So being a woman doing a PhD in computer science, I do think it's kind of my responsibility to be promoting that on social medias. And it's not that you need to be, you know, spending your whole life on social media or anything like that. It's just that you have some sort of presence and that it's also quite good for networking as well and just building up your reputation in the field. Twitter is a big thing for academics, but that's something I'm quite new to. So for me, I guess other things like Instagram and then YouTube as well are the ways that I'm trying to get myself out there. Also, it could be useful because if you're developing your content creation skills, that can just be a very employable skill in general for different companies. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But obviously you need to, you know, be responsible with how you use social media. You can't be just like sharing everything about your research because, or just things that are not, like if they're too subjective, then that's not good either. So, you know, saying this is the absolute thing that everyone should be doing and stuff like that isn't great. And then also not letting it distract you and becoming too addicted to social media as well. So then the last two skills I've left sort of specific to your discipline. So for me, the two that I would want to be adding on to this to make it like a nice 10 skills are machine learning modeling experience in general and learning how to use machine learning methodologies and stuff like that. And then as well, just programming and software development in general. So those would be the other two skills that I would want to work on. But if you are someone who works in a lab, it could be lab skills, or if you're unfamiliar with statistics, it could be analytical skills. So different things like that, depending on your specific PhD and your specific background also should be included. So again, aware of these skills can be interesting for you if you're considering doing a PhD, that you can learn all of these things and they're such employable skills as well. But as well, if you are currently doing a PhD, being able to track your development for these skills is very important as well. So again, if you would like to see a video where I show you at least first steps of developing these skills and how you can make it a plan and how you can track your progress towards these skills, then let me know and I will be happy to do that for you guys. Again, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. And I will see you guys in the next video.